welcome all of you um, of chaos, uh, to, to, you know, in, in this room to, you know, uh, today we are going to give the, you know, like the, the, the what's new in Chaos Mesh and uh, also I, I want to share a little bit history of, about Chaos Mesh. You know, this room is the maintainer check of, ma ma maintainer check uh, of Chaos Mesh, but technically I'm not the maintainer, I, I would say I'm the, but I'm the kind of like the creator of uh, Chaos Mesh. Uh, and uh, I would say Chaos Mesh is, uh, is a project that uh, is created by the accident. <laughs> yeah, so um, first of all, I want to do the really quick survey, who is, uh, any of you are using Chaos Mesh in, in production? Can you raise your hand? Only one. Oh, no, one. Okay, cool. I, I would say uh, I can see the great potential of this, this open source project. So. Um, actually, uh, before introducing you know the, the newest update for Chaos Mesh, I want to give a little bit about the history about uh, Chaos Mesh. Well, um, you know we we are come from the the company called Pincap, which is the uh, a distributed database company. We are seven years ago we started uh, to uh, started to build a uh, you know open source version of Google Spanner, which is which is TiDB. Uh, it is a um, highly distributed, massive scale distributed system and uh, provide a full featured SQL. So that means it's super complicated uh, distributed system. So that's, uh, it, it's really hard to build. But I think the even harder problem is that how to test the, the you know, a distributed system uh, like this. I think it is even harder than you know to build a you know distributed database. Uh, internally, I I I have a calculate the the code the of the our you know like unit test and the test case. I, I think the, the 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 line of code of our you know uh, integration test or test case is like ten times larger than the actual code base of our database. So. That's, um, that, that's what we said, the, the how to test the distributed system is really, really hard. And a good way to test the you know, distributed system is um, actually you know, delete your, your file in, uh, in, in, your, in your disk. Uh, I, I bet some of you may, may know this uh, TV show like Silicon Valley. And uh, it is, <laughs> so, uh, Accidentally, accidentally delete the the, the, the file. That um, I think that's a good way. Maybe that's a good way to test the uh, 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 distributed system. And another, you know, very interesting, you know, uh, speech uh, is given by uh, Foundation DB, and in 2014 in this in exchange loop, this. Um, this talk is actually really, really good. And this talk is long before that Netflix introducing the idea about, you know, chaos engineering. So uh, it's like, I think, uh, eight years ago and before we even create uh, PinCap. And I, I, <laughs> I watched that, that, uh, that talk. I think I learned a lot from this, this talk. Because uh, in this talk, uh, this guy introducing the very interesting concept means uh, deterministic simulation for the you know uh, for the distributed system. So that guy is basically want to build the uh, you know deterministic uh, simulator for all of the uh, to emulate all all of the. Uh, complicated uh, status of your your system and to reproduce the the bug, 100% uh, uh, reproduce the, 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 the bug. But I think, uh, I think it's not, uh, um, the deterministic uh, testing for the, you know, large scale distributed system is not that um, re realistic. So, but on the other hand, I think, in, Increase the the probability of reproducing bug by you know inject the failure to the the uh, the system is uh, is doable, and 
So we are not going to create 100% reproduce rate for, for your system, just like unit tests. I think unit tests is not, um, unit tests are, are not working for, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, prop, uh, bugs in uh, complicated distributed system. But I think the fault injection, which is like chaos engineering, is a more uh, reasonable way to, you know, create a high quality uh, system uh, on a uh, high quality system in the distributed world. So uh, that's the beginning of, um, and we take a look at, do the research on a lot of, you know, like for injection frameworks and open source project. And we found that it's really hard to, you know, orchestrating all of these uh, afford injection tools together to create the experiment uh, for you know, like your 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 orchestrating this this kind of tool, and also you can see the uh, Namazu, uh, you can see Jepson, and it is, um, but all of these two are totally separated, and it's really hard to use. So, and in the early days uh, of of Pink Hat, uh, the, the the database company. Uh, at the very beginning, we, we, we create uh, the internal project we, we call uh, Scherdinger. If you're familiar with uh, quantum physics, you know what I mean about this name. Uh, it's basically create a container-based fault injection system um, for, you know, uh, for, for our database. So it is only designed for, 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 for TiDB, but uh, I think that's the, you know, uh, and then we open source this, this project, changing the name as the Chaos Mesh. That's the beginning of Chaos Mesh. So that's the <laughs> original screenshot of uh, Schrodinger. Uh, but you know, uh, Chaos Mesh have, have a way more fancier you know, uh, dashboard and UI compared to this project. So this is uh, a little bit history, and we created this, this project in 2018. We open source this. Uh, at uh, 2019, the la last day of 2019, and then become uh, this year, uh, Chaos Mesh become uh, have become in the, the incubating project uh, in, in in CNCF. So yeah, that's a little bit background uh, about uh, Chaos Mesh, and <coughs> okay, okay. The 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 next part I will hand over to. to in the following oh. slides. Um, and the third one is uh, multi-Kubernetes support, which allow users to launch chaos workflow on multi-cluster using one global controller. Okay, so the first feature I would like to talk about is the Azure Chaos. So as the name implies, this feature allows us to run chaos workloads on top of the Azure Cloud. So before 2.4, we have already support GCP chaos and AWS chaos. We have already received many positive feedback from the community. So very naturally, we wanted to extend the cloud provider feature sets by implementing this Azure chaos. 
Uh, so the underlying idea of the Azure chaos is very similar to GCP chaos and the AWS chaos, which authenticated the chaos mesh controller manager to access the control, con, uh, to access and control Azure cloud resource under the user's account. Some simple Azure, some simple chaos actions we provided are virtual machine stop, which allow user to spe stop specific virtual machine instance. So nowadays we know the public cloud provider provide very reliable service, but some unexpected instance can still happen sometimes, like the whole rack of servers may temporarily out of use due to fire or power outage. And a VM stop can help us to simulate this situation. And the next next one is VM restart. This one is a slightly different between a slightly different because sometimes the virtual machine may keep restarting during a period of time because of hardware issue or resource scheduling problem. This behavior can add extra pressure to distribute system that require coordination between peer nodes. For example, if you are using Thai KV as the backend storage, if a server keep restarting, you will have a peer keep leaving and rejoin a network, which will add extra synchronization overhead to the whole system. The third one is the disk detaching. detaching. Most of the virtual machine instances on the cloud nowadays are using a unified remote storage, like EBS or Azure block storage. And this operation can help us to simulate a case of remote storage temporarily unavailable. Um, here is a brief example of how could you use the Azure, Azure Chaos. First, the user need to put the authentication information into a Kubernetes secret. Here is cloud key secret and apply this to the Kubernetes cluster. Then we can define an Azure Chaos workload, which will point to the secret we just created. And to define the action we wanted to take, here is the VM restart. Finally, we apply this workload to the Azure, uh, to the Kubernetes, and then the Chaos Mesh Controller will load it and authenticate and proceed the action. The second feature I wanted to introduce is the block chaos. In early years of Kubernetes, most of the users are using Kubernetes to build a status application. But nowadays, we are seeing increasing demand of building stable application on top of Kubernetes. So for stable application, what's the top priority? Um, it is saving the data correctly and efficiently. Therefore, stable and high performance storage is very critical. And ensuring application can still provide servers with temporary IO performance degradation is even more critical. To this, to, to this end, we implement the block chaos. Um, you may be a little bit curious because before 2.4, we actually have an IO related chaos workload called IO chaos, which can also be used to simulate the scenario of unexpected IO latency on block device then why we introduce a new I.O. related feature. Uh, the I.O. chaos work, uh, works well in most of the case, but it may come with a side effect when simulating a case of accessing huge amount of files. To implement the I.O. chaos, we run a chaos sidecar container inside the target pods using ptrace to replace the file descriptor of the target process and then take control of the file descriptor by adding extra latency to the I.O. operation. This mechanism works well in most of the case, but if the process is opening huge amount of files, like thousands or tens of thousands of files, then the ptrace will post the target process. And that is the some side effect, side effect we don't want it to import. So to better simulate the IO chaos scenario without importing side effect, we implement the block chaos in version 2.4. So block chaos simulate the case of extra I.O. latency on block device by implementing a kernel I.O. scheduler and offering two key features. First is the I.O. delay, which allow users to specify the latency of the block device. And then the second one, which is currently under intensive development, is the limit I.O. ops, which allow users to specify the I.O. ops of the block device. So how does block chaos work internally? First we take a look at how a normal I.O. request will be handled on a computing node. After the application sending a read or write request to the file system, the file system will then send the corresponding block I.O. request to the kernel request queue elevator. So this request queue elevator contains multiple I.O. scheduler from the kernel. And then a block I.O. request will go through all kernel I.O. scheduler, be sent to the hardware request queue, passed to the driver, Insert it into the MVMEQ, which is the short of non-volatile memory express, 
and finally be written to the disk. As I mentioned, we implement a kernel I.O. scheduler called IOEM, which will be added into the request queue elevator. So when a block I.O. reach the IOEM, instead of passing it to the next scheduler, the IOEM will hold it for a specific time and then pass it to the next I.O. scheduler, which simulates the I.O. latency scenario. So here is a brief example of how it works. We start with a write request, chaos is cool, to the specific block sector, and the IOEM scheduler capture the request, hold it for three milliseconds, and pass it to the hardware queue. Compared to the I.O. chaos, this feature simulates I.O. throughput decreasing in a more natural way without posing the process. The third feature I would like to talk about is physical machine chaos. If you are familiar with chaos mesh, then you may probably know that chaos mesh are usually used as a Kubernetes plugin, which allow users to launch chaos experiments along with target Kubernetes workloads. But there is some legacy workloads that just cannot be run in container and cannot be easily migrated to container or Kubernetes environment. So some users may need to manage a hybrid cluster consisting of nodes managed by, by Kubernetes running containers, nodes managed by hypervisor running virtual machine, and nodes managed by themselves as a physical nodes. To better support this case, we implement the physical machine chaos, which extend the chaos mesh framework from Kubernetes to physical nodes or virtual machines. To use the physical machine chaos, we need to first set up chaos D on each, virtual, uh, on each physical machine. Chaos D is a daemon process receiving commands from the central chaos controller in a Kubernetes and launching the corresponding chaos experiments. Chaos D can be run as a row command or system service on a target physical machine. Some common action of physical machine chaos are simulating a process flow like process interruption simulate network fold like network drop or throating or network bandwidth, simulating host folds like host shutting down, and it also provides some application or runtime specific features like JVM chaos or Redis chaos. So those are some new chaos workloads you can try out. And next, I would like to talk about some three generic features we added to the chaos mesh framework since 2.4. So the first generic features I would like to discuss is the status check in workflow. So to get the best results when running chaos workflow, we sometimes launch the chaos workflow in a real production environment, along with the real application or workloads. However, sometimes this application or workload are so critical that we don't want it to break them. To ensure this, we introduce this feature, which will keep checking the status of the application or workloads through the status endpoints or external monitoring system and automatically stop the chaos workflow if it find out that the application or workload is unhealthy. Here is a brief example of status check templates you can use to start a status check. The deadline field specifies that this node will be executed for uh, a maximum of 20 seconds. The mode field specifies that this node will execute status check continuously. It will try to pull the defined URL through the HTTP protocol and it will automatically abort chaos workflow if the return code is not 200. We are currently only support HTTP protocol, but in the future, we plan to support other methods like monitoring the Prometheus metrics and use the alert manager like Magnuson to automatically stop and restart the work, uh, chaos workflow. We also, we also improved the web uh, workflow web UI to facilitate the process of defining a chaos workflow. I believe most of you are like me, like you have years of experience of using Kubernetes and are quite comfortable of writing YAML. People say Kubernetes engineer or YAML engineer. But if we try to define a large chaos workflow, including multiple stage, then which can easily lead to hundreds of lines of YAML file. And I believe writing hundreds of lines of YAML file can easily get lost. Um, so we add a new drag and a drop feature to help users to define a workflow more easily. We record a short demo. Let me play it. OK. So uh, first, we need to decide what kind of experiments we wanted to run. Here, we choose the serial. We name it, set a deadline. 
then we will have a blank workspace and we can drag and drop this action we wanted to run in the workspace. We define the namespace and all other related fields. And then we click the submit button and then submit the workflow button. As we can see that the system will generate chaos experiment YAML in the backend. So feel free to try out this feature. I personally love this feature and I like it. So last but not least, let's talk about multi-cluster support for Chaos Mesh. So we keep receiving requests from community users that they are wondering about if Chaos Mesh can support running Chaos Experiment across multiple Kubernetes cluster through just one single global entry. I think this is a very reasonable request, considering that many users are building large distributed system or SaaS platform that need to be deployed across multiple Kubernetes cluster located in different geographical regions. And sometimes they wanted to run a global wide chaos experiment, like maybe simulate the apocalypse situation. So launching chaos mesh experiments on each Kubernetes cluster separately is very inconvenient as you need to log in different clusters, set up chaos mesh framework on each of them, run the chaos mesh workflow and keep your eyes on multiple chaos mesh dashboard to monitoring all the cluster. So to release the burden of managing multiple cluster, we developed the multi-cluster chaos, chaos mesh support, or you can call it a chaos federation. The basic idea is we connecting multiple Kubernetes cluster on a chaos mesh level we will still need to set up Chaos Mesh Controller on each cluster, but we don't need to do it manually for each of them. Be more specifically, we will assign a role to each Chaos Mesh Controller. We will have a central controller which will be assigned as the role coordinator, and we will assign an agent role to for all other Chaos Mesh Controllers. So when setting up the environment, we only need to set up the coordinator once and then register each member cluster to this coordinator by applying a YAML file like this. So we will first encode the member cluster kubeconfig into a secret. Here like cluster blah blah kubeconfig, apply the YAML file, the coordinator will load the kubeconfig from the secret and be able to access the remote member cluster. Then the coordinator will set up the agent chaos mesh controller on each member cluster. The agent controller is just a normal chaos mesh controller that identified itself as an agent. Once we successful, su successfully set up the environment and build up the connection between the coordinator and agents, the rest of the steps are very straightforward. We define the chaos mesh experiment as user with only two difference. First, we need to specify in the target remote cluster and uh, submitting the experiment to the coordinator instead of the agent. Here is a sample YAML. As we can see, it is just like a normal Chaos Mesh YAML file with one extra field's remote cluster. Once the workflow is submitted to the coordinator, it will then create the workflow on the target cluster and syncing the workflow status back to itself. Using this, users can control and observe Chaos Mesh experiments across multiple Kubernetes cluster using one central controller in the dashboard. Okay, so that's all the major features I would like to cover in today's talk. So for the future plan, there are several things on our roadmap. First, we wanted to improve the usability of the system. We wanted to add more um, inspection, sorry, inspection and the reports. And we also wanted to improve the debuggability of the system, like adding more rich observability results. And we wanted to support more status check types, as I just mentioned, like Prometheus and date docs. And we wanted to develop a new framework that is cool because we wanted to allow user to extend Chaos Mesh framework themselves by defining their own Chaos Mesh workflow. And the fourth is, what is currently under development is we are constructing a global hub that allow users to upload their cool chaos workflow and share with all the people around the world. Okay, so that's it for today's talk. Thank you so much. Any questions in the comments?
guess uh, yeah so I was curious uh, how would uh, you handle a case where of injecting a fault uh, leads to the unavailability of the cluster itself okay so your question is you're curious if the injecting faults will leak to the cluster itself right like, uh, do you have any specific case? Like, what kind of injection are you thinking uh, about? So, yeah, so I'm working on like stress testing. Uh, so I was thinking is like where I'm creating a lot of resources and seeing if it basically slows down the API server or the API server goes down or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think in most of case, if we are just use the chaos mesh, then since we are running container, right? So the things mostly is just injecting to the container, so it will not leak to the physical machine. But in other case, as I just mentioned, we have a phys physical machine chaos, so that one you need to be careful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you inject something to the physical machine, then that may be something, yeah. only running on the test environment, uh, sometimes we are not going to use this tool for the production system. They will easily mess up the whole things. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, well. Uh. Hey, uh, I haven't used uh, chaos mesh that much, but I just have a basic question. So how do you, so Kubernetes has got is all this uh, horizontal power scaler and then vertical uh, scalers, uh, right? Uh, so how how do you actually deal with that scaling and then stop the scheduler and then replica sets from actually thinking that it's actually failure and then going in a loop that while you're actually bringing down some of these parts? Mm. Okay, in, in, uh, your, your question is about how to uh, decide is this a bug or uh, I mean, how do you keep uh, the scaling in control while you're doing the chaos testing? Um, actually, we have a customized controller in, in uh, chaos, chaos, uh, chaos mesh. Chaos mesh have, uh, you know, we will build the, 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 the CRD and also have a customized controller provided by, by, by chaos mesh itself. It will inject into the Kubernetes runtime. So this controller will uh, follow the, the status running the, um, the, the chaos experiment. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my question is, uh, what if chaos mesh, uh, like chaos controller itself crashed during the fault injection and uh, as a result it felt like cleaning up the uh, the chaos injection process. Yes, yes. Mm, I think. So, um, your concern is what about the chaos controller itself crash during the runtime, right? So, chaos controller normally you are deployed as a container, right? So, if you it crash, you definitely will want to restart it, right? And we have a CRD to record the status of each chaos workflow. So after you restart, you still read the latest status from the CRD, and you can recover and resume your workflow. Yeah. And uh, what if like the chaos daemon that running on each node fail to like um, like revert the chaos injectors to the status before? You mean because that? I actually we experienced mm -hmm. that once and. Uh, the team that carried out the experiment panicked for for a while before we manually recover everything. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I think that's a bug. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is that a is that an answer? That's a bug. Is that an answer? Yeah, no. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but I, I yeah, but like to clarify, like most of the time it worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Then we need to fix the bug. Okay, uh, I will probably like try to collect the logs and uh, submit in the comments. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Great, man. thank you.
So in case of uh, chaos toolkit, we have uh, a, a, a section to check the steady state, right? Mm -hmm. Is the status check is the equivalent of it? Or what is uh, the status check uh, in chaos mesh actually is for? So, yeah. So you, your question is what is status check used for, right? Yeah. So sometimes when you're doing chaos mesh, you, you may want it to add stress to a large cluster, right? Yeah. So sometimes, I mean, as I just mentioned, we don't want it to run it in production environment, but sometimes maybe we want it to run it in production environment, but we don't want it to break the actual application or workloads. They are very critical. So we have this status check to keep checking the application and the workloads. If we found this application or state or workloads are unhealthy, then we will automatically abort the chaos mesh workflow. And then, you know, we will dump all this data and then the SRE team will come back and yes. investigate and then we can know the limitation of this whole system in the cluster. I, I will use an example to explain uh, that. For example, if you are running the database, uh, distributed database, uh, the, the unit text, uh, the testing is like uh, keep a stable uh, workload and you will have the QPS and TPS status. And then you do the fault injection because you, you, you know the system will be automatically recovered. But if the, the, the system after the fault injection, they are not recovered, you will know, hey, uh, this is something wrong with your, your system. Yeah. So the check is, is to make sure the system is behavior right. Yeah. Got it, so just to abort the chaos testing, just in case if things goes, uh, on the wrong side of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that gentleman have a question. Yeah. Um, so Istio has uh, like fault injection already built into it. How does it work with Istio? Is it something you would use instead of the Istio fault injection or does it work with it or? Can I repeat the question? <laughs> So Istio has like uh, its own fault injection oh, mechanisms where you can inject yeah. latency and failures and stuff. <clears throat> so do, would this work, would you use this instead of the Istio fault injection or with it or? Yeah, I think the two systems can work together. They are decoupled, right? They are not, but you need to make sure, you know, understand, make sure that this, mm. this behavior is caused by Istio fault injection. This behavior or this unexpected situation is caused by chaos mesh. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe you can create the new uh, chaos type into chaos mesh. Uh, it is called Istio chaos, something like that. This, yeah, it's doable. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know Istio itself can do the full injection. That, that's really cool. I'll check it out later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess that's Thank all. You. Thank yeah. you.